So we talk about the four P's of creative learning and uh, it's the learning philosophy of the MIT Media Lab. We use them both in the way that we structure our own learning. So we have 150 graduate students. We try to design their experience using these four P's. Um, and I should have said, it's projects, peers, passion, and play. Um, we think those are good uh, ways to think about learning experiences. And so we use them internally, but we also use them, we do a lot of research about learning technology, and we use the same principles to design the tools that we then deploy to other communities. I think MOOCs are the beginning of the future of digital learning. Uh, I, I think MOOCs have been very successful in um, uh, starting a conversation about using technology to learn. And I think that has, lots of people have worked on uh, online learning before, but the conversation never had the same importance uh, in terms of how universities are thinking about technology now, how much money is flowing into technology. So I think that's very, very positive. Uh, the piece with MOOCs that I personally am less excited about is they still replicate a very traditional model of instruction where you have the expert who talks at, you know, in the classroom, maybe tens or hundreds of people, and now online, thousands and ten thousands of people but we haven't really changed any of the pedagogy. Uh, and the research shows that that pedagogy of having someone uh, talk uh, to convey content isn't actually a very effective way of learning. So I'm excited about more creative ways of using technologies to learn online. So now the history of online learning is um, the differences actually are not that great. There's, they're essentially, um, uh, the size of the community that participates is very different and if you have such large numbers you can do some things that you couldn't do before which is for example if you ask a question you're very likely that someone will know the answer and they will reply to you so you feel like you're part of a very large community and that I think that's a powerful experience um, and then secondly um, they're more designed for individual study by one student in front of their computer with mini quizzes and feedback, whereas traditional online learning was more, you still had a teacher who would engage with the students either through email or back and forth writing, but it was much smaller, smaller communities. It was more personal attention from a, a teacher. So I think historically that's been kind of the progression. I think as we're moving forward from where we are now, we're going to see more uh, online learning communities, uh, less courses. We sometimes at the Media Lab, we say from a course to a community um, because essentially all learning happens inside communities and courses are just kind of mini communities. Uh, and so I think in the future, we'll see people more working on, on authentic problems and projects as part of online, very large online communities uh, of professionals, academics, students, where it, it's not uh, necessarily uh, structured as a learning experience, but it's just uh, an activity that you are interested in. One, well, one is, I would say, um, maybe even the way you ask the question, I think in the, it's at least in the MIT Media Lab, so I'm at the Media Lab, we are a part of MIT, uh, but MIT, uh, at MIT there are lots of different groups working on learning and education. Um, and at the Media Lab we sometimes say learning over education or learning over teaching. Uh, and um, so the technologies that we design uh, and the experiences that we design generally start with the interest of the learner and we try to create a lot of space for the learner to explore different directions. Um, other parts of MIT are more interested in the efficiency of learning, so having a very well structured course that you can work through much faster because uh, the content is repeated at a, at a certain speed. But at the Media Lab, I would say uh, it's more creative learning technology. So those four Ps that I mentioned before, projects, peers, passion, and play. Well, from what I know and what I can see, and I don't speak Spanish very well, so it's a little hard to, to, uh, to comment really in detail, but from the outside, it looks like uh, the university is a real innovator in the space of online learning and is part 
kind of one of the leading in international institutions experimenting with MOOCs and new forms. Um, from the conversation we've just had, uh, I took away that a lot of the curriculum, and this might be more uh, uh, the guidelines for the Spanish education system as a whole, uh, that the curriculum is still very uh, clearly structured and that they're very uh, clearly defined learning objectives. Um, and also that the um, uh, assessment uh, is very important. And so when you have so much structure, and you know there are good reasons for structure, but when we have so much structure, it can be a little bit hard to to push the innovation beyond it because uh, you want to experiment with new ideas and by definition new ideas don't fit into the old structures. So I think that's an interesting tension that I heard from the conversation here that people are, are asking all the right questions about how would you structure learning experiences, how would you use technology to do this, um, but that they're kind of negotiating the, the freedom that they have to, to experiment. Um,